Yeah, car's dusty. I'm gonna work. Does anybody know what happens if you put in just like, just a smidge too much oil in the engine? Is that a terrible thing? Did I just destroy the car? I hope not. Hey, notice anything different? It's been a while since we've been in the car in the videos, but do you hear the obnoxious mirror sounds? Probably not, because it's not making it. I popped the tweeter cover off there and disconnected the wire, so that's not a problem. Oh, and ordered a new mirror that I'll install on there when it comes in. I'm looking forward to that. It'd be nice being able to drive around and not have that obnoxious grinding sound in the background or right in the left of my ear from that broken mirror. Oh, and the maintenance light, that's just because I'm a smidge overdue on an oil change. Not really even overdue, but you know, they give you a specific number and that goes in there. Then the light comes on, you hit those miles, you get it. It's gonna take care of that next week. And all the other lights went on too when I pulled out of the driveway. So that's fun. It does that sometimes. Toyota doesn't know why. They're just like, yeah, it's probably not a big deal. Cool. The teenager, being a teenager, giving me teenager problems. Not a big deal. This is a car I drive to pick up dirt and plants. I don't need it to be perfect. I kind of enjoy having something to work on and fiddle with. Anyways, uh, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great reason through the intro because I would like to put the camera down. I'm not looking at it. Don't worry. Just holding it in my hands. On my way to the hardware store to pick up a bunch of mulch. Beautiful day. It's 67, 68 degrees, something like that right now. It's supposed to drastically change tomorrow. It's going to be in the 30s and 40s with lows in the 20s. Maybe some dips into the teens. I don't, I'm not really all that concerned about any of that. The plants are inside but I want to go buy the mulch to put around the bananas probably tomorrow or the day after. Sometimes I'll let the frost hit them and then mulch them. The main thing is I just want to get it home before the bags at the store are frozen. Said I've, I've had to buy frozen bags of mulch before. And it's not so fun. I haven't taken you all along with me to run errands in a long time. Poke around at the house plants very, very briefly. Get back, unload some mulch, and just see whatever else happens. Also just realizing they may not even have enough mulch. Kind of late in the season. If not, not the end of the world. Always have leaves and other stores you can go to, but I would imagine that they should have plenty in there. Okay, was this, was that enough? Have we seen the plants? Can I move on now? Thirsty pothos over there, hey. That's a nice big staghorn fern. Oh, love a kangaroo paw. They smell nice. Saw a rabbit's foot over here. Excellent ferns, good one for beginners. Some orchids that have some pendulous growth to them. Don't see that that often anymore on the super super propagated orchids you just kind of have like a nub with a few flowers back in the day that long blooms that went down the whole inflorescence cascaded really far it's something i've missed don't see that very ops opsin don't see it very often anymore nice looking skin dapsis seeing lots of little bromeliads some peperomias bird's nest ferns aglanemias they have those or they the steel blue philodendrons, whatever we're calling these things. Baltic blue. That's an epiprenum, isn't it? That'd be a pothos. Global green pothos. Edsoni eyes. See some pearls and jades up there. It's, it's actually a pretty decent selection. Nothing I'm interested in, but things that I know a lot of y'all like to look at. Plenty of cactus and succulents over there. I do miss the days where there would just be tables and tables of the little ones you could do your own thing with, whereas now everything's pre-planted up and just looking great, I might add. That's worth every penny, I'm sure. Look at that. $16. There, there's a bargain. And amaryllis. Amaryllis and paper whites. Nice looking Sansevieria over here. Looking good. That's really full. Oh, it's in a giant pot. That's why. This is $50. The Sansevieria is $50. This is $50. Okay. Yep. That's enough of that. Look at the little altissimas. Those are looking fun. And we've got paint cans with plants in them. Oh, there's the first load. I was only able to get 20 in the car at a time, so figured I should come home, unload, and head back out. Usually I can get like 40 bags in there, but I didn't want to push it. You know what? That's 
That's fine. This is fine. No big deal. Whatever. Load number two. Got the last eight bags of cedar mulch now. We can do the rest with cypress. That's fine. Loading mulch onto a cart's not the most exciting thing. This cypress looks an awful lot like pine. Like pine shavings. It's not. It'll work. Not crazy about the color though. It's a little bit lighter. Cypress is always light, but this is this is extremely light. It's okay though. There it is. 50 something bags, 60 bags. Oh, something like that. I think that should be enough. Not piled on the car. It looks like it's piled on the car. It's just hanging out there for a day and then I'll do all the things once the frost is rolling in with the plants. For now it's here. Took one more trip than I would have preferred. Just didn't want to mess with hydraulics in the car too much. I know that it can handle it. I've done it before, but it seemed risky. Okay, there's plants inside. Let's go look at plants. Okay, welcome to several days later. That's probably obnoxious. Why do I never remember to put that thing down until I start to film? It, did you, could you even hear? It's several days later. Got pretty cold out, had some family in town, did the whole hang out with family thing, it was nice. And then been doing a few little things in here that really weren't video worthy, I didn't think. I really can't get rolling on projects until these windows get replaced and I can get that new shelf installed, which hopefully is happening in the next three to four weeks. I'm hoping, cause it's pretty dang cold outside. Having windows put in that are properly insulated would be nice. The bottom shelf over there, fairly chilly and I have lots of fans pulling things around in here. One thing has come up, and I did do a video about it, the dust. It was a video prior to this, this white dust I've been finding everywhere out here. I had a lot of comments, a lot of people replied, offering some advice. Figured I should follow up on that since people were gracious enough, took the time to reply and tell me what they think, that I should let everybody know what's going on. So just a quick recap, there's been an odd dust in here for about, I'd say two and a half weeks at this point, like a greenhouse dandruff or something. It actually, it looks like drywall dust. I've been under the assumption that it was drywall dust. I was thinking that there must be a rodent or something around here that's chewing up the walls or the ceiling, something in this area causing it to blow around because it really, it looks just like drywall dust. If you've ever cut up drywall, then you know what I'm talking about. But I'm just not seeing a spot where that would be coming from. There are lots of spots I can't see, but how that dust would then be getting all the way up there, I don't know. So there were people suggesting that drywall dust from having the windows replaced. That probably will be an issue. It probably will be dusty, but the windows have not been replaced yet. I did get a new furnace like about a couple weeks ago, but the HVAC doesn't run out here to the garage. So it wouldn't make sense for there to be dust out here because of that. I don't think they cut into anything that would have done that there's a spot up here where the electrical runs through that goes all the way down to the basement to the breaker box that this is hooked to because that has to go into a 40 amp breaker and see all that dust that's collected on the hairs of this fan up here which i know disgusting but I, you're in my garage place is full of dirt and plants it's not squeaky clean out here it's never going to be because you know dirt and plants all over the place so i need to take that down and give it a clean it's, I don't know how it would be drywall dust because I just don't see a spot where the dust would be getting in there. I did also look inside of the heater with a flashlight. I don't see a buildup of any kind in there that would be blowing it around, which led it back to being the humidifier. There's an ultrasonic humidifier in here that could be happening there. This is one of the reasons I want to talk about this because there was some confusion as to how this could be possible due to the humidifier that's in here as to how the water vapor would be leaving or carrying around minerals with it. This is, it's not steam. It looks like steam, but it's actually teeny tiny little water particles. Let's say this is calcium, a mineral in the water, and my hand is a vaporized water droplet. That gets vaporized up, holding that calcium in it, and then it lands on a surface. Probably not that one, because I'll drop it on the inside. Water evaporates, leaves behind the mineral. Did that, was it, did I do a good job? I hope so. That can be an issue with ultrasonic humidifiers. I used this out here for, what, a year or two? And this has never been an issue before. So the question is, what's changed? One of you made a really good point. I put a new shelf in here. Not that the shelf would be leaching anything out into the water to cause this to happen, but if you watch that video, pulling the old shelf out, chef, pulling the old shelf out stirred up 
a lot of gunk and it got the water pretty gross. It's going to increase the TDS to an extent. I mean, not really. What's dissolved there should have been dissolved if it was within the concentration as it was. But it just made things gross in the water. So that could have had something to do with it. And those get carried up into this heater or they're evaporating and sticking to the sides of the fan wherever there's hair and fibers, any kind of seemingly somewhat porous material, and then drying out and then flaking off as it builds up. So I was thinking that's probably it, right? Things got really stirred up in here. I didn't drain it down all the way and clean it afterwards. Another thing that I didn't do this year because I had to rush the plants to get them inside, well, I back up and tell you what I didn't do. I normally fill this for the first time of the season with reverse osmosis water. I have an RODI, that's deionized reverse osmosis filter in the house that I use for the saltwater fish tank. I have a separate line that runs out just to reverse osmosis water in here. Takes a very long time to do that. That is generally how I get it up and going. Just nice, pure water. It gets it to like 99.9% .9 pure. Very clean. Not quite as clean as distilled, but pretty dang close. And then I normally refill with tap as the seasons goes on, just because it takes long to do that initial fill. It's kind of pointless to even do it in the first place since I don't keep refilling it with reverse osmosis water, but I have another reverse osmosis filter that I can set up and hook up over here and set it to an automatic thing. It's gonna be a big project because I have to move things around and run a line to it, but it can be done. Before doing all that, I really need to make sure that that's the problem. There were also some suggestions that the TDS, which is just the total dissolved solids in the water have been building up over time because that doesn't evaporate the same outside of the vaporizer that we were talking about, the atomizer, when it's just water evaporation that does become concentrated. However, this is here because I use it to water the plants. This gets drained down about 50% every single week, sometimes 75% every single week, and then gets refilled. So you see why I don't wanna use RO water, reverse osmosis water, every single time I refill it? That would be a lot. It would just, it would take a very long time to get it refilled. So if I wanna get it onto an automatic refill system in the future if that's the route I decide to go. So it's not really all that likely that that would have been what's going on there because this does get drained down and refilled. The TDS does get diluted. Tap water quality does fluctuate throughout the year. If you can go onto your state, your city's websites, your water treatments, and they have graphs that should show you your TDS and all the different minerals and pollutants and things in your water. And usually, I, I can't speak for everywhere, but in St. Louis, you can look and see the different times of year where things fluctuate and change. There could have been something in the tap water. I, I don't know. So here's what I did. I went ahead and I gave everything a very thorough watering, which they needed anyways. That wasn't a big deal. Drained it down fairly far. I would like to drain this out all the way, but the, the plants, they, they weren't thirsty anymore. I don't want to drown them. So maybe in a couple more days, they'll dry out and I can give them a heavy water again, get the rest of that water out of there and give this whole thing a heavy clean. But what I noticed though, is that when I turned the humidifier off, it, I had it off for 48 hours now the dust didn't stop. However, when I turned this nasty fan off that has the grill on it that I need to pull down and clean, completely stopped. Not that I think that this is producing the dust, but I think that enough has built up on here that it's very slowly flaking off of it and just blowing all over the place. Potentially from when I stirred everything up in the water and then that built up onto the surfaces. That's the only thing I can figure is that when everything got stirred up in there, it blew around a bunch of vaporized junk and that built up and now there's that dust everywhere. But you can see it's not in the chair anymore. That's dirt. That's just soil because I was just standing on it to get up close to show you all the drywall up there. So the next step is just to get a ladder out and get that fan taken down and get it cleaned off, get this drained down the rest of the way and refilled and then see what happens. I know that that was a long follow up, but I really appreciate everybody who stepped in with their opinions and comments. A lot of you were talking about how it looks like drywall dust. It does. I, I, really, I was thinking that there must be a mouse or something. Perhaps there was a mouse nest being built up there somewhere in that area that that drywall dust was getting to it. But I'm not seeing anything anywhere that's showing where the drywall would have done that. People say mineral deposits, love the mysteries, unless humidifier is designed for tap water, you'll see white dust everywhere. Good to know. I don't think the one I have was made for tap water specifically, mineral deposits, drywall dust, drywall dust. Yeah. I don't know, still mystery, but just eliminating variables and eventually get it figured out. My main thing was just that I didn't want to have 
buildup inside of this heater here because that seems like a fire hazard. Doesn't seem very safe to me. Oh, and you watched last week's vlog. I fixed the heater. By fixed the heater, I mean I went downstairs, flipped the breaker, and then turned it back on, and it's it's fine. I don't know. I guess it was just having a bad day. I don't know what that was about. Okay, so that's the first update with everything. Second update, I talked about spider mites in the last video, in the last couple of videos, and uh, also having this dust out here and how I have predatory mites coming in the mail. Those are supposed to be here tomorrow morning. So I went ahead and gave everything a heavy watering, which was good timing because they needed it and I needed to drain this down some more and made sure to clean the leaves on everything because they had all that dust on them. So it needed to be done. And uh, the directions said to remove any webbing from the spider mites. So I went ahead and I, I did that and then I rinsed them with the hose and got them nice and clean. The problem though now is I don't, I, I have no idea where the spider mites are now. The webbing was very, very fine and uh, I'm not seeing any indication of them anymore. Not for the most part. There is a colocasia over here that clearly has spider mites on it. So I at least know I have a spot to release them over here. Up here on the shelf, I can't tell because the leaves are all facing upwards on this colocasia here, but you see how they're cupped and dull? And this one had spider mites during the summertime. It was the culprit. It was the, that was the problem child this summer when it came to the spider mites. So I know that I can release them over here. And then I guess I'll just spread them around the rest of the grow space. They really need to go where we're actually seeing the spider mites though, because they will only live if they have spider mites to eat. There's all the dust out here and then the webbing that I assumed was spider mites. In the last video, I showed you all how it was on things that we're not plants, which means that a lot of the webbing probably not from spider mites. And then I was looking around over here. I'm gonna see if I can find it again. I think it was one of those things where I was just lucky enough to have it under the right kind of light. There is a tiny little string and no, I don't know. Hold on, I'm gonna keep looking. Okay, this is going to be very hard to get on camera because it's teeny tiny and there's a light bulb behind it. But you see the little dot up there? That's a spider and there's webbing in there. It's hard to see. And then I went through and I looked around at the other webbing and just found just tiny little spider wings, which I'm fine with. Spiders are good, which I'm fine with. Spiders are good. They're welcome out here. I think there was a hatch out of lots of little spider wings and that's where all that webbing has come from. So I now have, I think 10,000 predator mites coming in the mail tomorrow. And I don't, I don't know if I'm gonna need them all. Hopefully they'll be okay. I'll probably do all that in a separate video so I can talk more about predatory mites. You can see there's still plenty of dust on some of the leaves here that I thought I got clean, but I guess I didn't get up there high enough with the hose. I was thinking those were spider mites. So yeah, the spider mite situation that I thought was like about to turn into a full blown catastrophe out here. I think it might actually just be a couple of plants, but it would have gotten pretty bad. I just, I wouldn't have ordered as many as I did. Oh, I'll handle that tomorrow. In other exciting news, there's a new leaf getting ready to open up back here on the elbow that looks Pretty white. There might be a hint of green in there. I'm not sure. Need to get this draining down. I have a drain kit that goes on these, but I don't have all the pieces yet. So I have to come over every now and then and loosen up the drainage hole to get the water to flow out, which I don't mind. It gives everything a chance to soak, a chance to take in those nutrients a little bit longer. So there's a hole in the top shelf and the bottom shelf, middle shelf that is, and then the bottom shelf. So the water just goes from here to there to there. When I have the plumbing kit set up, when the next shelf gets installed, then it will actually have a tube, a pipe that runs from one to the other, a larger pipe, because these holes I've drilled are fairly small and they clog up very, very quickly. It's kind of annoying, but at the same time, it's also kind of nice. Like I said, it gives the plants a chance to have a soak. Not everything needs that long of a soak like this. Gloriosum back here, that's in a pot that doesn't have a drainage hole in it. It's in one of these like latexy pots. So it needs something for stability. I should move that to something with a drainage hole. So that's something I should remember to do. Otherwise everything else is looking pretty good considering how erratic things have been out here. It's just a mess, a giant mess. It's driving me crazy. It's an improved mess. It was a lot worse. It is getting better, but I really want to get those shelves set up. I have also been spraying for mealybugs on this orchid here. This particular orchid has just I don't know why, always been a mealybug magnet. I have to go through and clean this thing off every couple. I don't actually know why I still have it. It's just a fuller sunset, which is a beautiful orchid. They have nice big yellow flowers. They last a really long time, but they sell these everywhere. It's not like a 
special rare plant. I just, I've had it for a while and I enjoy when it flowers, but I could pick up a new one for 15 bucks that maybe won't be as much of a mealybug magnet. I don't know why, it's just this one. I have two of these fuller sunsets. The other one it doesn't happen with. Although sometimes it is nice to keep plants around that the mealybugs really like because then they hang out in that particular area and it's a lot easier to spray for them. I have only seen the mealybugs this year so far on this orchid down here. And then there were a couple on this cordelin section over here that I managed to I just went with my fingers and smashed off. That's a whole separate thing that I'll talk about when I talk more about the predator mites. There's the dust update. I turned off the fan that was covered in whatever the heck that stuff is and it stopped blowing around. The humidifier being off didn't stop it from happening. So uh, I, d I don't know. Regardless, I'm gonna finish draining this down, get nice clean filtered water in here and give that a go again. Here you go. Good boy, good boy, Turbo. You want another one? Go get it. That wasn't a good throw, was it? I'm sorry. All right, one more. Here you go. All right, you have to sit for this one. You got to earn it this time. Good boy. That was a good sit. That was a good sit. Can you lie down? Show everybody how good you are. Are you going to lie down? It's not actually a question. You have to lie down. Good boy. Good boy, Turbo. And then treats for you. It's morning. Kind of. Sort of. I slept a little late today. A long night. You gonna go? Do you actually need to go? Sometimes he just wants to stand there and then turn around and stare at me and hope he'll let him back inside to get a treat. Is that what's going on here? You try and trick me? Back for more treats? I get a kiss? He's a little one? Oh, thanks, pumpkin. You can come in. Good boy. Been so good about that, making sure you have permission before you go in and out the doors. Been working on that one and a good set. Good boy. Pumpkin, I gotta get your cookies out. You can do your stretches. Well, those aren't your stretches. Roll over. Good boy. We, I don't make him roll over all the way. Big dog. Back problems. Don't want. Doesn't have back problems. I don't want him to develop back. But I didn't do anything. You have to do something for it. Lie down. Come on, crawl. Okay, that was, that was good enough. Oh, I just filmed her doing the cutest thing and I didn't even have the camera on. I can never get her on camera doing the wave. Will you do it again, pumpkin? Stand up and give a big wave. Come on, wave. No wave, well, you still stood up. That was a nice stand up, good job. One more time, up, up. Come on, up, up. Good girl, that is so good. Good girl, pumpkin. Let's go, come on. It is so freaking cold out here. I'm gonna need to go put on pants and shoes here in a moment, you see, can you see? Oh, it's so sad. Yes, women's season's over. Had a good run, though. Didn't even shut the pool down to, what was it, like November 17th? Pretty good. Got lots of good swimming in. Burned a lot of calories, built some muscle, shoulders feeling good. It's cold, though. Not as cold as you would think, because the water's still somewhat steamy and keeping things toasty over here. Not exactly saving plant lives, but could be worse, considering it's been down to 19 degrees. It does, I mean, it, I guess, well, yeah. It does look like it's been down to 19 degrees, doesn't it? I was about to say, you can't even tell. No, you definitely can. It's, it's everything. They're all dead. That's what the mulch is for, right? And come in here, cut everything down. Mulch them over. The bananas, I cut to 18 to 24 inches of pseudo stem, or you can call it trunk if you want to. Uh, foot would be fine too, and just get mulch all the way up and around them, make sure it comes out a couple feet. I like it to be about a foot above wherever the highest point of the trunk is, and that's all there is to it. Those two are so stinking cute together. Yeah, I still have two viburnums left to plant. Haven't gotten around to getting those two in the ground, but we'll get there. It's supposed to be much, much warmer next week. Back up into somewhat normal temperatures. We even had some snow. I swam laps in the snow. It was fun. Not as much fun as you would think it would be, though, because the water was, like, 96 degrees somewhere in there, and it's not that easy to breathe, it turns out, when you're swimming in a cloud of steam. It was a fun experience, though. As far as the plants are concerned, which is what I should really be focusing on, because even though this is a vlog, it's still a plant channel, I don't, do I need to film the mulching? I've done it every year for, like, seven years, six years. I'm just going to cut them down and pile mulch up around them. I just feel like it's not that entertaining. Uh, the main reason, okay, apparently there's three viburnums left to plant. <laughs> Didn't, I forgot that one was right there. main reason I even came out here was to talk about the colds and the palms and those things. That's when I tend to get questions about what's going on with the plants. The mule palms, 
stay out to about 15 degrees. I think I'm going to go ahead and take the Bismarckia inside because it already had to deal with some extreme cold last year and I've been getting it to come back from that. So why push it even further? That needs to come inside. I think that everything else is good to stay though. 19 degrees. The mule palms can handle it. They're kind of looking wonky because the snow weighed them down. But mule palms, they're fine. Really nice having some green out here this time of year. Things are just looking so bare and so sad. Barely even out here anymore. Anymore. The last couple days because... It's just, it's too quiet. I don't like it. I miss the sound of the water. The planters over here, when it warms up, I'm going to move them. The pots are more cold and more likely to break if I move them since everything's frozen. It's 29 right now or 32, somewhere in there. It's been shifting around. So that's another reason I don't really feel like filming the mulch because I don't think the camera is going to last long enough for y'all to really even be able to see anything. I'm surprised it hasn't shut off as it is. Maybe this footage will be useless. I won't know until I put it into the computer. Oh, and here's something I've been very surprised about. Wait, th this should be dead. I would have thought, I know that the new Regella fireballs, new Regelia fireballs are supposed to be one of the more cold tolerant ones. Like people can grow them in zone 8 usually, in warmer zone 8. But I never pushed them this far. Just because they're red right now doesn't mean that they survived. These could totally still die, especially if I take them inside and things are really warm, which is what's going to happen. I have two of these and they've gotten really, really big. So I was like, well, I don't need the other one. Maybe it's time to sacrifice it, but it's been a fighter, <laughs> so now I feel bad. I'll take it inside and see what happens to it. I don't have high hopes because the cold damage can take a while to set in. Although this is endured another night in the lower 20s, so it, I don't know. It could be totally fine. Or it's just frozen. It hasn't been warm enough to rot yet. This we'll find out. If I can reach up there high enough for this to hang without falling down on top of anything, you good? I don't think so. That seems that seems pretty sus. That's gonna come down. I, oh, no, it's over the lip. That should be okay there. Not a good permanent spot, but I don't want to stick it right under the lights and directly underneath that heater when it's, it's a pretty drastic change. Oh, and backing up to the bananas, if you were wondering, this is what I use to cut down the trunks on those. Just a saw. Sometimes I'll use a machete if I'm just feeling really adventurous, but this this gets the job done pretty well. Gets it done very quickly. It's just a, just a saw. Works pretty well. Have a 12 inch blade on there. Cuts through it like butter. Ah, uh, you can even hear all that noise in the garage. I don't know if it's gonna come through on the microphones, but one of the other reasons that I didn't want to do the mulching on camera is because the neighbor's lawn crew had just shown up and there's like six people outside with backpack blowers doing the leaves. It sounds obnoxious. There's no way I would have been able to do that on camera. Could have done the thing with the music, but when you look at the YouTube stuff, like on my and the creator side, there are graphs that show when people stop watching, and whenever I cut to video montages, the viewership just goes boop, and then stays down and then comes back up. So I'm like, okay, so nobody seems to care about those things. I think they're kind of fun to make. Takes a while. But if most people aren't watching that point in the video, they might as well just tell you. I cut them down, throw some mulch over them. And there you go. See that? Isn't that fun? Looks like it's going to be a decent sized leaf. This is a philodendron McDowell that, I know, not looking super hot. This one just showed up about a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago. Happy to see a new leaf coming out of it. I had to trim a couple others off of it. Thinking that I need to get this one staked up, just put a few sticks in here to add some stability to these stems so it can stand upright. There's an awful lot going on in this little pot. Pot doesn't feel all that full, so I don't feel inclined to start cutting away at it just yet. I think that keeping it in there for, I don't know, a few more months or until it's getting hard to keep the plant hydrated is probably the way to go. So I was just gonna put like three or four sticks in here. Maybe just the two. This is the only other support I could find. Usually I have tons of these things laying around, but. I have apparently used them all up, and I don't know, that might be a bit much for these clippers here. Let's see if I can cut through that. Uh, decided to do it with two hands underneath the desk. I got paranoid about chunks of bamboo flying up in my face. Didn't seem super safe. Wouldn't want that hitting in the eye. Is that even in there all the way? <laughs> That's not quite tall enough. That should be good enough to make a little cage around them. It's not the most attractive thing. I don't like having to do that with the philodendrons that have these really long stems on them. But once this opens up a couple more leaves, that really won't even be noticeable. And heck, by the time it opens up a couple more leaves, I don't think I'll even need supports in there anymore. I'll probably be able to go ahead and repot it, at which point I'll probably need to add more supports. And staking it up gives me the opportunity to get to use 
this thing. I love using this thing. It's totally unnecessary. It's just fun to have around. Just goes around the plant, get it around the stem loosely like that. And that's it. Isn't that fun? Wish that the tape was green. That'd be nice, but I got blue. And that's all right. It'll work. Now, I bet you're wondering, hey, Jeff, why did you bother going and grabbing four stakes when you only have the three plants that you need to do this with? To which I say, I don't know. It just kind of happened. I needed a third stick, and then there was a fourth, and I put it in there. Don't really need it. The three of those should hold this upright just fine. Yeah, that's much better. Love this philodendron. The McDowell is one of my favorites, which is something y'all are going to be hearing me say about plants for a while. I mean, I've always said that about most of my plants because it's not one of my favorites. I don't usually grow it. And if it becomes not one of my favorites, I get rid of it because I'm not going to waste the time taking care of something that I don't even want. McDowell, it's just fun. It has the gloriosum in it and the pistanzinum in it. I've never been able to say that one. My mouth will not say that word. I've never been able to. It's been many years. It just won't come out of it. Pastanzinum, pistanzinum. I don't know. I know what it is. Here it is. It's a cross, a fun cross, a very vigorous grower. The Gloriosum, probably my favorite of the large big leaved philodendrons, particularly the round form. That That's a really nice one. In the McDowell, you still get that beautiful veining that you would get with the Gloriosum. And the, I mean, they both have heart shaped leaves. But these have a nice vigor to them. It's a sturdy one. I highly recommend if you want a philodendron that grows quickly and has the big leaves, I'd go up to McDowell. It's been a pretty solid philodendron for me in the past. And these became really, really freaking hard to get a hold of for like three or four years. Probably, probably more like two years. Around mid-2020 when all the plants got hard to get, it's like these vanished. And then uh, they've slowly been resurfacing as small plants. Back in the day, fellow OG plant nerds, you know what I'm talking about, you could get the McDowells in like 15 gallon pots as like gargantuan, huge plants for like 150 bucks, something like that, for ones that were really big and established. And that's, that is so not the case anymore. And even Plant Vine, popular websites, I know a lot of people think they're plants are really pricey, but I think their plants are just about on par with a lot of other places now, but they were very pricey back in the day. I haven't looked in a minute either, so I don't know what their prices are like now, but they used to have gigantic ones of these on their website for like 150 to 200, and I mean big, very large, robust, fully established, nice looking plants. Hopefully that'll be the case again soon, someday, or at least getting them smaller will become more easy. I'm starting to see a lot more of them. I don't know what happened. I don't feel like they were one of the philodendrons that got talked about a ton, but they were selling out everywhere. Maybe it's because, okay, hold on. I think I put, I got the pieces put together. It's one of those plants where you used to be able to come across them at the nurseries for fairly reasonable prices because people weren't really buying them. It's just a plant with green leaves and people weren't all that interested in things that weren't, you know, like crazy, bright, insane, colorful, like your typical common house plants. This is before the house plant craze started and people started getting more educated and seeing all the fun things you can grow, the nice big green leaves, what's to be appreciated about them, which I enjoy. Not so much the price tag that comes with it. Point being, they didn't cost a ton because nobody wanted them. Apparently at some point people started to want them and it wasn't one that was produced a ton, not because it's hard to produce, but just because the demand wasn't there. And uh, it looks like the stock's starting to build back up on them. So that makes me happy. Because if you like a plant that just has nice big green leaves and it's pretty easy to grow, this one. Crossing that Gloriosum with the Pastanzanum. Pastazanum. I can say Pastazanum just fine, but I'm pretty sure that's not how you're supposed to say it. You know what I mean? The other one, it's just resulted in a wonderful plant. Highly recommend. Okay, I need to bring that Bismarckia inside. Gonna get the mulch down on the gingers. Sorry, I'm not bringing y'all along. I really, I don't think anybody cares. Otherwise I would, I totally would. But like I said, I really just don't think that it's all that exciting. Not so much because of the low tonight, 19 degrees, pretty cold, but the ground's still fairly warm. And like I said, the pool's still putting off a good amount of heat, even though it's been drained down several inches. It's still steaming in the morning and at night. Cause like I said, that water was in the upper nineties. It's gonna take a few days to cool off and that's keeping things fairly warm. But uh, it's the low tomorrow night, 16, which I don't recall 16 degrees in November ever. I'm sure it's happened, but that, I just don't remember it. Not thrilled about that, but I also don't really care at this point because the pool shut down. 
everything that needs to be in right now is inside except for that Bismarckia palm. Uh, ex there is one problem though. I'm waiting for a package from Equigenera and uh, I don't I don't have high hopes for it. <laughs> Happens with them, you order the plants usually like, I don't know, six to eight weeks sometimes prior to when they ship them. Sometimes it's just a month or even a week. It depends on when you place your order. I thought I had ordered them with plenty of leeway so that they wouldn't get shipped during the cold. And uh, it turns out I was wrong. So it'll be interesting to see what those show up looking like. I Hopefully they'll get here today, even though it's been pretty cold. Uh, if they don't come until tomorrow or if they don't show up by tomorrow, uh, those plants are probably screwed. I'm gonna go check the front porch. That was so lucky. I don't know if luck is really the right word. It's been cold all week. A lot of y'all know it's been cold all over the entire country. So I still don't know what these are gonna look like and they're gonna get these opened up. First, I need something to open up the package that contains the things that I bought to help open up packages. I grabbed these at Lowe's deviating from the plants for just a second. Apparently I've reached that age where weird dad things excite me. I'm a sucker for a pocket knife, a foldable pocket knife, and these things, it's two for seven bucks. That's a great deal and I love these. I have a whole bunch of them, they have a little button on them. You push the little button and you can slide it right into the little, into the container. Isn't that nice? Seven bucks, pretty good for these. I'd like to save this unboxing for a separate video, but since I brought it up and I talked about it, I will at least pop it open so I can let y'all know how they're looking and then I will actually show and talk about the plants in a different video and then we'll do a separate video with much better camera quality. I'm using the B cam which is a fine camera but it doesn't adapt into my tripod. It works better with my microphone. I don't know it should work the same with the microphones the wireless ones but that's better noise canceling. That's why I'm trying it out because all the leaf blowers and all the noise. And I would like to be able to show these with better camera quality. Is it cold in here? Oh yeah. They're pretty chilly. At least they're styrofoam. It's not sealed around. I don't think there's a heat pack. I've ordered plants from Equigenera and had them come in looking okay during the winter time. So hopefully that'll be the case. Again, I tried. I tried to do the right thing and I ordered them a long time ago. Wasn't expecting an Arctic blast to come rolling through in mid-November. Although I don't know why I didn't expect it. We had one roll through in October, which I have never seen happen before. Looks green. That's a good sign. And looks green. It doesn't help that all of these plants are plants that tend to look like crap after they get shipped in general. Even if they have some dieback on them, I don't know if I'll be attributing that to the cold. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited to get the good camera out and have all the lights on and all the audio and get in on, on, on this one. This one right here. I'm excited. You can probably tell what it is. I don't want to tease y'all too much with it. Thanks for hanging out while I attempted to get things done this week, but you know how things go. Family and those things are important and cold and swimming and all that. There is other stuff going on. And uh, I'm just sort of in a standstill waiting for these windows, which I am so excited about as of today when it was in the 20s this morning. I realized how old these windows are. Uh, so overdue. I was just sitting at the kitchen table this morning going through some emails and I was freezing. I was probably four feet away from the windows. The gas, the vapor inside of them is totally worn out. So within a few feet of those things, when it's below like 35 outside, you're going to be cold. Hopefully in the next few weeks, that's going to get taken care of and I can get the new shelf set up, get the plants arranged and have things looking nice out here. But yeah, like I said, thanks for hanging out. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life. Everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. Comment down below and say hi. I love talking to everybody. The humidifier ran all night. No more dust. I really am thinking that it was just some kind of crazy, disgusting buildup from when the water got stirred up onto the dust fibers that are on that fan and the fan was blowing it around. So next week when it's warmer, I can open up these garage doors, get the ladders out. The ladder like has to, I have to have an angle to get it out. So I have to, be able to put the garage door up and I don't want that door up for more than like 30 seconds to a minute at a time when it's this cold outside. But when that happens, when it warms up, I'll be able to get the ladder out, get up there, get that screen down, get it cleaned off, get the new lights hung up. Looking forward to that. I've had the new lights for like, three weeks and I still haven't been able to get them hung up yet. It's been fine though. The plants don't seem to care. So I, that may have just been a total waste of money because everything's growing and 
seemingly happy. New leaves popping out of things. There's still some yellowing. That usually goes on for several weeks after I bring them inside and get used to the flow of everything with watering and the routines and the maintenance and whatnot. Just the adjustment from them being outside on drip and me just kind of letting them do their thing versus having to really be much more proactive with their care. It's a total shift. It's very different having the plants inside versus outside. I feel like there was something else I was supposed to talk about. So many updates to get, but I don't remember what it was. I'll try and include it in next weekend's vlog. I'm trying to get back into doing the Wednesday videos. Had one part of this one all about the weird greenhouse dandruff stuff that was going on down there. I have the predatory mites that got released this morning and uh, new plants that hopefully aren't frozen and going to die. I don't know. We will see. Thoughts and opinions on the McDowell? Do you love it? I don't normally go nuts for the plants where it's just a big green leaf, but that one I really like. I appreciate a nice big green leaf, especially on like a Monstera or a Leucocasia, one of those plants, but when it's just like some of the philodendrons and anthurium, like you need something else going for you. Otherwise it just kind of looks like an elephant ear or a caladium, but costs an awful lot more and grows more slowly. But the McDowell, there's just something sweet about it. It's a sweet looking plant. It's on the ground, otherwise I'd have it in frame while I'm talking about it, but the ground's a mess. Y'all don't need to see it. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.